It's one of the sadly inescapable truths of human existence that all good things come to an end. No matter how high we may rise, we must inevitably fall. And so it is that Game of Thrones disastrous season 8 finally staggers over the finishing line with The Iron Throne, the last ever episode of a show that was once considered the greatest achievement on TV. This is it. This is everything the show's been building towards for 8 seasons, 73 episodes, dozens of hours of storytelling and world building and character development. All the victories and defeats, all the alliances and betrayals, all the friendships and sacrifices, the heroes and villains, the triumphs and heartbreaks, the entire song of ice and fire, all of it comes down to this final piece of... HUMAN EXTRANET! Yeah, it fucking sucks. After everything it's accomplished, Game of Thrones dies not with a bang, but with a whimper. And when I say whimper, I mean a wet and suspiciously warm fart at the end of a violent romantic conquest. <coughs> now it's no secret that I'm a man of many words, and you'll struggle to find a more eloquent connoisseur of entertainment in all of YouTube, but it's difficult even for me to properly express the sheer scale of the disappointment, the waste of so many years of build-up and careful development, the abject failure of even the most basic elements of storytelling that is the Iron Throne. But I do enjoy a challenge, so let's begin. The episode kicks off in the aftermath of the nuking of King's Landing. Tyrion takes a walk through the not-so-bustling streets before making his way to the Red Keep, which now looks suspiciously intact considering the entire fucking thing exploded and collapsed at the end of the last episode. Ah, whatever. I guess buildings have plot armor now too when they contain iconic locations. Hey, those sets cost a lot of money, guys. We've got to get our money's worth out of them. So because Tyrion has a spare copy of the previous episode's script, he knows exactly where Jamie and Cersei went, and he makes his way down to the crypts to recover their bodies, and they're neatly laid out beneath a layer of bricks so he can have a nice crying scene without witnessing the horrifying effects of what hundreds of tons of rocks would actually do to a human body. What is the point of this scene? We know they're dead already, why are you showing us this stuff again? All you're doing is wasting time telling us things we already know. Now you begin to see the problem of killing off two major characters in an isolated location where no one else can see it happen. I honestly expected one of them to spring to life in the ultimate cheap shot, so I guess we should be thankful for small mercies. Anyway, all the Unsullied and Dothraki that have regenerated since the Battle of Winterfell have gathered in the central square of King's Landing. Finite resources and battlefield casualties mean nothing now, remember? Armies can be as big or as small as the writers need them to be, and right now, we need them to be fucking huge. So then Danny appears on a balcony to address her armies, and it made me laugh because the whole scene's set up to look like the Nuremberg rallies in Nazi Germany. Really subtle visual metaphor, guys. Anyway, she gives a rousing speech about how they've all done a great job of liberating King's Landing and they should all feel really proud of themselves. What the Terry Funk? The smoke is literally still rising from the charred corpses of the thousands of innocent civilians you've just napalmed to death, and without a trace of irony, you're gonna stand there and call yourself a liberator. I get that they're trying to show how even the most despicable people try to mask their acts of cruelty by couching it in safe, positive language, but seriously, this is just taking the piss. It's like a really crappy SNL skit, which is basically all of them these days. But it gets better, because Danny won't rest until they've liberated the entire world from the cruelty of being alive, and everyone starts celebrating like they're really excited about the wars to come. What the actual Fukushima have I just watched? Why are you people happy about this? Your forces have been devastated, you've lost your fleet, two of your dragons and tens of thousands of troops, you've inherited a devastated kingdom and a destroyed city. City. You're in no condition to conquer the world or anything else. That would be like the Soviets standing in the ruins of Berlin in 1945 and being like, Great news, comrades. Now we're gonna conquer America. Break out the vodka. Uh... Anyway, Arya's there looking like she's getting ready to Ryan Johnson Danny's ass. And Jon's like, nah, it'll be fine. And then they both do absolutely nothing anyway, because it's not time for Jon to act, and the writers have got no clue what to do with Arya ever since episode 3. Fuck off, show. 
Then Tyrion shows up and hands in his resignation in front of everyone, and Danny accuses him of being a traitor, and he's like, yeah, I totally am. And that's it, he's arrested and taken away. <coughs> Oh my boy, what have they done to you? The Tyrion I know would never have sunk this low. He would have found some way to make it right. I mean, there are countless ways for a man of intelligence and resourcefulness to kill Danny and take revenge for what she's done. For example, you could poison her at dinner. <coughs> or sneak into her room and strangle her to death in the middle of the night. <coughs> or join forces with the best assassin in Westeros. Or wait until she's taken a dump and shoot her in the chest with a fucking crossbow. But instead, he just wanders into the middle of the Nuremberg rally like a fucking bell end and gives himself up. What the dickens? They've given him the full Varys treatment here. Once cunning and highly intelligent characters are reduced to pathetic simpletons to service whatever passes for this story. <coughs> <coughs> Fuck off, show. Anyway, Arya's Ryan Johnson abilities are still cooling down, I guess, so she tells Jon that he has to be the one to stop Danny because only he can do it now, and Jon's like, nah, it'll be fine. So Jon visits Tyrion in prison, and Tyrion realises he's dealing with a complete moron, so he sits him down and patiently explains to him that nuking an entire city and killing tens of thousands of innocent people probably means that Danny doesn't have the right stuff to rule the Seven Kingdoms. A duh. Are we actually having this conversation? Like, this isn't some alcohol-induced fever dream of mine. This is real. This is in the script. Are you actually trying to defend this murderous, genocidal, megalomaniacal lunatic? You complete and utter tool. If the total destruction of King's Landing isn't enough for you, what will it actually take to make you realise she's lost her fucking mind? <coughs> <coughs> Fuck off, show. Then John leaves because the script decides it's time for him to act. So he makes his way to the Red Keep, where Danny's alone in the throne room with no bodyguards or protection. Lucky this place also had its plot armour on. Anyway, she's messing around with the Iron Throne and thinking about all the places she'll liberate next. Fear not, peasants. Every town shall have a Starbucks under my rule. And John's like, Danny killing bad. And she's like, nah, it'll be fine. And he's like, okay then. So then they kiss, and he knifes her, and then she dies. <coughs> Fuck off, show. I'm not kidding, that happens, that's in the script. What a fucking indignity for one of the best characters to come out of this show. A character who clawed her way up from virtually nothing to become the most powerful ruler in the world. Not a shred of remorse for what she's done. No attempt to explain her actions or apologise. No hint of suspicion that John might be there with ill intentions, even though she already knows he doesn't love her and violently objects to her recent actions. No, she just goes in for the kiss like a fucking love-struck teenager and that's it. She's done. She dies with barely a sound. What a waste. So anyway, Drogon shows up and he sees Danny lying dead, so he gets mad and torches the Iron Throne and it melts into a puddle of disgusting molten slag. Pretty emblematic of this entire season, to be honest. That's dramatic irony at work, folks. The Iron Throne was forged in Dragonfire, and now it's been unmade in the same way. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Shut up! So Drogon picks Danny's body up and carries it away, and it's supposed to be all poignant and emotional, but all I could think of was this. Like, where the fuck is he even taking her anyway? I mean, I get that a simple burial wouldn't be very grand, and a funeral pyre wouldn't work on her for obvious reasons, but really, think about this for a second. Drogon's not going to be able to tend the body. It's just a matter of time before the animals get to her. Now you might be wondering how Grey Worm and his mates would feel about their queen being murdered. Well, your guess is as good as mine because the episode hard cuts to another scene a few weeks later. Tyrion gets summoned from prison to be sentenced for his crimes, and it turns out all the lords and ladies of Westeros are there to figure out what the fuck they're supposed to do next. And Arya and Brienne are there to bulk out the number of women. We've got to hit those diversity quotas somehow, guys. Gendry's there too as the Lord of Storm's End, even though the only person who legitimised his rule is now dead, so fuck knows how that works. Oh, and Sir Davos is also hanging around, even though he belongs to no great house and represents no one, and he even admits he doesn't know why he's there. Pointing it out doesn't make it any less ridiculous, guys. 
So Grey Worm's angry and he wants John dead for murdering Danny because murdering defenseless people is bad, don't you know? <laughs> people in glass houses, mate. You're a fucking war criminal, you constipated looking arsehole. Anyway, they all debate what should happen next and somehow the talk turns to who should be the next king because the writing can't support a conversation with any kind of logical structure and Edmure Tully stands up and makes an arse of himself so Sansa tells him to shut up and sit down and he does. You bell end. Then Samwell Tarly suggests a democratic voting process for the common people of Westeros and everyone has a good laugh at that and he sits down too. Wow, wacky humour in the wake of a tragic death, that's what we need, right folks? Then Tyrion starts talking and for some reason everyone listens to him, even though he's a prisoner summoned for judgement. And what happens next is so mind-bendingly retarded that I'm actually going to stop recording this now and re-watch the episode to make sure I really understood it. <laughs> yup, it's real, it happened, it was in the script. Real functioning adults approved this. Tyrion reckons the best person to rule Westeros is... Are you fucking kidding me? Bran? The guy who's spent the last few seasons warged off his tits. The guy who doesn't even know where he is most of the time. The guy whose physical body is just a shell to keep his spazzed out mind tethered in the real world. This is the man who's going to rebuild a devastated and divided kingdom. This is the guy who'll manage its economy, its infrastructure, its relations with the rest of the world, its military and its politics. Or is this your way of showing that disabled people can be rulers too? Ugh, I can't take it! So for some reason everyone thinks this is a good idea and they all agree and then Sansa demands that the North be an independent kingdom and Bran's like, yeah whatever, I've got more prehistoric wheelchairs to browse. I suspect you should get used to that kind of answer guys. <coughs> <coughs> Fuck off show. So Jon's reward for saving the entire world is that he's forced to join the Night's Watch, again, because Grey Worm and the Unsullied really have some pulling power on this one. What the fudge? The Night's Watch? Like, they're still a thing? Why? The White Walkers have already been Ryan Johnson, and the Wildlings are now your allies. What exactly are they supposed to watch? You're just pulling this stuff out your arses now, aren't you guys? So Jon says goodbye to Sansa and Arya. Sansa's now Queen of the North, because why not, right? She's totally earned this. And Arya's run out of things to do, but the writers didn't have the balls to kill her off, so she's going to sail west and just see what happens. I'm not kidding, this scene actually made me laugh because it's so forced and contrived, even the actors don't seem to know what's going on. A character whose entire identity is built around being an assassin just out of nowhere decides to become Dora the fucking explorer. It'd be like if John Wick decided he wanted to work in Starbucks. Ah, oh, whatever. Anyway, Tyrion's now Hand of the King, because why the hell not? He convenes his small council and Bronze there as Master of Coin. I literally can't think of anyone less suited to this task. Anyway, Sam Tarly presents Tyrion with his history of everything that's happened to this point, and he calls it the Song of Ice and Fire. Well, never saw that one coming. And Tyrion's kind of embarrassed because he doesn't get mentioned in it. Then Bran shows up and he leaves again, and they get down to business and start bickering in a jokey kind of way. And the scene ends like an outro for some cheesy 90s adventure series. So Jon returns to Castle Black and reunites with Ghost so that Mauler can stop complaining about it. Then he heads north beyond the wall with the wildlings to do... something? I don't know. Is he king beyond the wall now? Is he making a new life with them? Are there any other Night's Watch going with him? No, oh, whatever, who even cares at this point? And that's it, that's the plot of this episode and the end of Game of Thrones. <coughs> what a fucking disaster. It's hard to even know where to begin when it comes to analysing this episode without just repeating the same criticisms I've levelled at the rest of this series. Everything that was bad in the rest of Season 8 is orders of magnitude worse here. Whether it's the insane plot decisions that would never even have been contemplated before, like Bran being named King of Westeros, the utter character betrayals like Danny's great dictator speech and ridiculous death scene, or John being exiled right back to where he started in the Night's Watch. Or maybe it's the fact that other characters are just shuffled right out of the story without explanation because the writers were too dumb and lazy to think up a proper resolution for them. So Arya's off to explore the world, eh? 
Yeah, that totally makes sense, given everything she's done up to this point. Do it. Bronze master of coin now. Why not? Can't see him abusing his position. Sam Tarley's the Grand Maester when he's barely 30 years old and completely inexperienced. Sure, I can't imagine anyone objecting to that. Grey Worm's off to make a new life with the Unsullied, even though he totally wants John dead. Meh, who cares. Everyone just accepts Brienne being a knight now because Jamie got drunk one night and made her one. Nah, it'll be fine. This entire episode smacks of, well, we had to give them something to do. World building, consequences and character motivations have gone completely out the window. People say and do things they would never have contemplated two or three years ago. They accept decisions and suggestions that would have been laughed out of the room in earlier seasons. The emotional tone of this episode is all over the place. One minute we're staring at the horrifying aftermath of the destruction of King's Landing and dealing with the sudden death of one of the most important characters in the entire show. The next we're supposed to be laughing at a pompous idiot tripping over his sword, or the small council having some light-hearted banter like they haven't just lived through the most apocalyptic conflict in history. Game of Thrones at its best gave us a window into a world that felt real and grounded. Bad decisions often had far-reaching consequences, and characters who acted without considering the wider impact of their choices often paid a high price for their mistakes. Truth and honour weren't always rewarded, cunning and betrayals weren't always punished. The show's characters lived in a world that was as harsh and unforgiving as it was rich and varied, and they had to learn and adapt quickly if they expected to survive. Whenever you thought you had it figured out, you'd learn there was always someone smarter, more ruthless, more prepared than you. There was a sense that everyone knew just a little more than they were letting on, that they were just a little bit smarter and more capable than they wanted you to believe. It made them compelling, it made them interesting, it made them real and human. But in this season, the veil's finally been lifted and the truth laid bare. And the simple truth is, there's nothing behind it. These characters are only as smart as Weiss and Benioff were capable of making them. And it turns out, that's not very much. Master plotters like Littlefinger, Tyrion and Varys became mostly irrelevant once the focus of the show moved from political intrigue, alliances and betrayals to flashy set-piece battles. And although Tyrion made it through to the end, probably because Dinklage was too popular to kill off, but honestly, his actual character died in like season 6. Danny, who went from sympathetic refugee to godlike messiah to violent conqueror, suddenly turns into a mad idiot who lets her biggest and most dangerous rival drive a knife into her chest because she still believed she could win him over. It's sloppy, it's lazy, it's awful, and the character deserved so much more. The destruction of military resources and buildings means nothing now. Armies that should have been crippled by overwhelming losses can be reformed into highly effective fighting units in the space of a single episode. Castles that have been flattened and gutted by dragon fire in one episode are shown with only light damage in the next. It's completely bonkers and it destroys all sense of consequence and impact. Ultimately, the Iron Throne is the final humiliating nail in the coffin of a season that's simply run out of creative steam. It destroys whatever's left of the show's integrity, it cheapens and dumbs down every character it touches, and in a very real sense, it tarnishes what should have been a glowing legacy as one of the greatest shows in TV history. People don't always remember how a story begins, but they remember how it ends, especially if it ends badly. And the fact is, Game of Thrones has ended in the most disappointing way possible. But it's over now. And it's time for everyone to move on and forget the past eight years ever happened. I know I will. I've got just the thing. Oh, and that's all I've got for today. Go away now.